What I'd like to look at today is the product rule and the quotient rule. And we're actually going to prove why these product and quotient rules work using the definition of the derivative. So, as a reminder, we can use the definition of a derivative, <coughs> which is uh, f of x plus delta x minus the function at x all over delta x. With a product rule, we have f times g. So I have f of x plus delta x and g of x plus delta x minus your function f times g. Okay, what I'm going to do here <coughs> to try to solve this, it's going to be just a little trick and it's going to seem kind of weird, but here's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to copy this exact function as it is. Copy and paste it. And here's what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to take this section here and I'm going to kind of pull it off to the side and I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to expand this numerator a bit. What I'm going to add in between this numerator, and I'm going to do it here in, let's go in pink, is I'm going to add a random term. Oh, I don't like that color. Try that again. I'm going to, let's do it in, in gold. I'm going to subtract a random term. This term is going to be f of x plus delta x times g of x. Well, okay, why would I do that? Well, here's what I'm going to do. Let me get a little more room. Whatever I just added there, or subtracted there, if I add the exact same thing right back, have I changed this function at all? No, I really haven't. I've subtracted and I've added the exact same thing. I'm right back where I started. So really, I didn't change it at all. I just kind of added a little something something on that. So what I'm going to do with this now, though, is <clears throat> I'm going to kind of split it up into two different pieces here. I'm going to look at this first half. And I'm going to look at this second half and see, well, what is something that maybe I have in common with them? Well, with these first two, what I have in common here is an f of x plus delta x. Well, I'm just going to literally factor that out, x plus delta x. And that leaves me with, I have g of x plus delta x minus g of x. Oh, OK. That should kind of look familiar. Okay, let's do the same with this one. What do they have in common? Well, they have a g of x in common here. So if I pull that out, I'd have a f of x plus delta x minus f of x left behind. Because I had, again, g of x in common. Now, all that is over delta x. Well, what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to split this into two different fractions. Like one half and three halves can become four halves. I can kind of split it back in their individual pieces, same way. Now, what I want to look at here, <clears throat> because it's all over delta x, what I'm going to look at is this portion right here and this portion right here. That should look very familiar. Well, that right there is literally the definition of a derivative. So this is the definition of a derivative for g. Well, how do we write that? We write that as g prime of x. Same thing here. This guy becomes f prime of x. Well, what about the other parts that are left behind? Well, I still have this g of x that was hanging out in front, and I still have this f of x plus delta x that was hanging out in front, and I still have to take this limit. Well, now I no longer have a delta x to divide by, so I can plug in 0 for f of x, or for uh, delta x. There's the only delta x left, so all that's left behind is just f of x plus 0 is just x times g prime of x, and then plus g of x times f prime of x. Well, that's exactly what our derivative for a product rule is. 1 d2 plus 2 d1. So kind of weird and kind of arbitrary why we knew to subtract and add that value, but it works. Let's look at the quotient rule, because guess what? It works very much in the same manner. Starting the exact same way, I have f divided by g this time, so I need to first do that. What I'm going to do to begin this problem is I need to make a common denominator. So to make a common denominator, I've got to multiply this first fraction by g of x on the top and bottom, and this one by g of x plus delta x on top and bottom. So when I do that, what am I going to have? I'm going to have f of x plus delta x times g of x, and then minus f of x, g of x plus delta x. My denominator here is 
I have a g of x and a g of x plus delta x. And really all that is over delta x. It's all in a denominator, so I can put the delta x in there with it. Now again, we're going to have a very similar scenario here. I'm going to take this entire thing that I just had, copy and paste it, and I'm going to do the exact same idea. I'm going to take this part, kind of shift it off a little bit to the side, because we're going to expand our numerator again. So expand that guy again. Okay, and this is what it's going to look like. What I'm going to add and subtract this time, I'm going to first subtract f of x times g of x. And if I subtract it, then I better add the exact same thing right back to keep it the exact same on the top and the bottom. Okay, so this is still my definition, still my limit. And I'm going to go through the exact same process that I just did. I'm going to factor out things from the first two guys and factor out things from the last two guys. Well, on the first two, what they have in common is a g of x. So I'm going to pull out g of x, and what's left behind is going to be f of x plus delta x minus f of x. Now, I pull out from the second set, I'm going to pull out the f of x, because that's what they have in common. So I'm going to pull out an f of x. And what I have left behind is going to be g of x minus g of x plus delta x. And again, it's all still over this big denominator. Delta x, g of x, g of x plus delta x. Still my limit. Now, what I should notice, remember in the last problem of the product rule, this looked really good. The f of x plus delta x minus f of x when it's all over delta x like that. That's a really good thing. So what I actually could do is I can take this and put it as the denominator for each one individually. So I'm going to do that first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that's now split into two different fractions going on here. So if I can slide that down. Well, maybe I can't. With A plus in between. Now, the issue is here, though, like this part right here, a different color, get yellow out here, that right there represents f prime of x perfectly. This right here is not quite correct. These two terms are flip-flop. This one needs to be positive. This guy needs to be negative. Well, to flip the sign, all I have to do is have factored out a negative one, a negative f of x. So I can make that a minus, and that flips my sign perfectly. And now, okay, I have f prime of x here, g prime of x there, and let's see what the rest has in store. I still have g of x up top, what I have on the bottom, g of x, g of x plus delta x, then it's times f of x. Minus, over here, I have an f of x up top, and the same thing, a g of x, and a g of x plus delta x on the bottom. Well, okay. It's still the limit as delta x approaches 0. Now if I plug in 0, because I no longer have delta x's to divide by, that becomes 0, that becomes 0. They both have the same denominator, g of x times g of x, which is g of x squared. They share that denominator. Look what I have for my numerator. So first numerator is g of x times f prime of x. And then the second guy is f of x times g prime of x. As I run out of room on my screen. Times g prime of x. Again, it's the exact same thing as what our quotient rule is. Low d high minus high d low all over low squared. You know what you're doing. Have fun.